All right, so good afternoon, good morning, good evening, where you guys are, depending on your time zone. And welcome to our um, Seek community call for this month. And we have some exciting updates and slideshow this, this time. So <laughs> have your popcorns and everything ready. Um, so uh, without further ado, let's go and jump. Before, before uh, asking Christian, Johanna, do you have any updates from the Zeek LT side of the project? The main updates are that we announced Seek Week completely, I think. So if you don't know yet, Seek Week is going to happen this year at Caltech in Pasadena, California. Um, the main conference days are August 14th, uh, 13th and 14th, and we have a training day on August 15th. If your um, registration is not quite open yet, but will hopefully open soon, but if you're have something interesting interesting that you might want to talk about. We posted our call for presentations and you can um, submit a presentation now. It's going to be open for a while, I think till mid-June, uh, but we are going to do reviews in waves. And if you submit your presentation earlier, you have a higher chance of being accepted. So um, if you have something that you think might be interesting, look at the CFP and send us your presentation. Um, and I think most of our time and energy has been has gone into Seekweek and will continue going into Seekweek for a while. We have also continued to um, work on the race, the responsibility assignment matrix that we have talked about um, a couple of times in the past. Um, and um, we are starting to prepare a number of blog posts about that that talks a little bit about the process and the outcomes of that. There's also one small very small outcome that you might have noticed if you pay very close attention. Um, in the past, um, essentially the project structures changed a tiny bit um, and mostly to update things to fit to reality again, because um, to go a little bit into history, a long time ago when Seek was mostly developed by research institutions, um, there was this thing that we called uh, the um, Seek team, which was essentially a mailing list um, between the people that were actively developing Seek. And um, that has existed till very, very recently, even though there was no activity at all on that anymore, because nowadays all of our development is on the in the open and that, yeah, that didn't actually have any place um, of there wasn't really any reason for this to exist anymore. And it made the structure of the project more complicated than it needed to be. So we removed that, which you can see if you take a look at our project structure documents in Wikipedia. But that's really only clean up. And um, I think that's everything that has been going on on this uh, secretly side. Awesome. Thank you so much, Johanna, for the updates. And again, if you need any further information, if you have any questions, any kind of like comments and suggestions, feel free to reach out to us on Slack and we will be more than happy to answer any questions you have regarding the event, um, what to expect, what not, so on and so forth. And we are really excited and looking forward to meet lots and lots of people in person after quite a long time. So um, yeah, please, please um, look out for all the other week week related announcements for future and uh, we'll, we'll make sure that we post them on Slack channels as well. With that, I think I have just like one teeny tiny announcement. Um, Kelly wanted uh, me to share that we have, a, we have a Zeek training slash event that is going to happen on 19th April in B-Sides KC, which is Kansas City. And that is like a CTF style event. So um, I'll post the link um, and I, I, I think the link might be already shared, shared on the general Slack channel for Zeek, but if not, then I'll post the link in the channel for more details. So um, that's going to happen in next few weeks. Um, with that, I think I'll just hand it over to Christian to take the floors and share all sounds, the cool work. Sounds good. Thank you. Here, let me see if I can get this all to work. Um, I will share my screen. There we go. Can you guys see this? Okay. Hello. Yes, we can okay. see. 
Good. That was an uneasy silence. <laughs> okay. I'm also in an unusual network and I shouldn't have network problems today because I fussed a bit, but you know, yesterday didn't go so well. So anyway, so uh, thank you guys. So the idea for this is that since we uh, just recently released 6.2, I wanted to give a bit of an update on on um, like what was in that release, um, sort of where this came from, where it's going and, and so forth. And the idea is really that... Um, the last time I think I've done this to a general audience was really only at the last um, Zeek Week, which has been a while at this point. Um, and the only other opportunity you might have had to see something like this would have been um, in Amsterdam, I believe, at the Zeek Day. So so, so smaller audience. So I think there's, there's generally uh, no harm in doing this more frequently. So maybe we can commit to this at this point. And so this is this is what this is about. And to start this off, I will share something that I've shown a couple times in the past, uh, and it's uh, a clarification about our release cadence, or basically just an explanation of it for people who have not perhaps really sort of seen this and who are new to Zeek. So we have three feature releases every year. We don't stick to a sort of pre-fixed um, release schedule. We don't issue release dates. We basically release when we have um, essential agreement that a release is ready about three times a year. And we start these releases in, in cycles. And the start point of a um, release cycle is what we call an LTS release, our long-term support release. This is um, a release that you can always recognize because it is a .o release. The most recent of those would be 6.0, 6 6.0. .0. Um, and we maintain that for the full course of a year. So when subsequent releases come out um, and we make um, bug releases, bug fixes, sorry, we release bug fixes, then we will backport those into those um, LTS releases. So let's say, you know, that .o came out and a little while later we release a point release, then that is like the, you know, the .o.1. Um, and in the meantime, um, development continues, and about a third of a year later, we will release the next feature release, which is the point one. So the most recent one of those would be the um, 6.1 release. And that release is significant for um, at least two reasons. Um, first of all, it is the release during which we um, remove deprecations. So if you look at the release notes for the prior releases, you will often see that we say uh, certain things are now deprecated. So this is the release where we pull it. And if you are interested in keeping your you know, packages and so forth um, forward compatible, that makes this release a particularly good one to give a go because you will basically get an early indication whether everything still works or whether you have been using something still that has been deprecated for a while. It is also the um, official end of the previous LTS, uh, LTS cycles um, release. So when this was X.0, the support for X minus one essentially um, would be done at this point. And that's basically because we give people a bit of an overlap, a window in time uh, where multiple LTS releases are supported because it gives you more time to switch over. And this is essentially addressing um, a concern where people have frequently pointed out that a single re um, year for LTS support isn't that long to begin with. And then if we then introduce sort of a hard switch over cutoff point from one LTS release to the next, then that's not so useful. So, so this is basically the window of time you have to really um, switch over. Um, and then the same model applies. So if we find bugs, we fix them in a point release and we will backport that fix over into the LTS release and sort of move on. And then basically another part, another third of the year goes by and leads to the next point release. Um, that will be the dot two. And this is essentially what just happened. Um, Zeek 6.2 just came out. And this is important in the sense that when that happens, we stop maintaining the point one release. So the dot one and the dot two are because of that somewhat more um, sort of short lived, which really means that for almost everybody, the long-term support release is the version to go after to try running in, in, in production. Um, and the model here is the same. So if we find bugs, then there is a point release for the dot two series and we backport that into the LTS release. So with that, you know, um, that you sort of have the full sort of picture of the three re releases and development continues and you're basically back in the beginning of the next cycle and that next cycle's long-term support version. Um, so with that information, you basically know everything you need to know about what is sort of coded into a Zeek um, version. So if you find, you know, 6.0.2, then you know this is a long-term support version that has a couple of bug fixes in it and so forth. 
And just to paint you a, a picture of where we are right now, um, it's basically just after 6.2. Um, so the sixth cycle is essentially done. The next release will be 7.0 that should come out in the summer. And we have all of this sort of, you know, uh, cadence uh, uh, thinking written down in the wiki. I put the link down here at the bottom if you want to check that out. It sort of spells out some of the details in a, in a little bit more detail. Details in more detail. Um, that's basically all I had sort of for the cadence. And then I wanted to give you a bit of context on 6.2. And let me sort of rewind a little bit and go back to 6.0, um, because 6.0 back in July last year sort of set us on this trajectory where we have been doing work along two big sort of themes. It's infrastructure and usability. And so I'm not going to go through all of the bullet points here. It would take forever. But sort of the, the, the biggies in terms of infrastructure, for example, were JavaScript support. We had a first version of, of JSON ingestion. Down in usability, we, we added community ID so you can run it without a package. We, we did work on spicy support and so forth. So this is sort of um, really sort of split across these two themes. And more or less, most of the work that we did was actually visible in that release. And this, this becomes important in a second. Um, and then, you know, about a third of a year later, in October, we released 6.1. This was interesting because we, for the first time, added new um, spicy analyzers. Um, again, the same split, sort of infrastructure and usability. We had some language work that makes some sort of development work and, and, and um, well, general sort of scripting work easier. Uh, we iterated on the JSON ingestion, um, thanks to some user inputs, very helpful. And, and this is why I'm mentioning this. Arguably, most of the work in 6.1 actually happened behind the scenes and is not visible in that release. And it's because we started work to revamp Broker, our essentially our pub sub layer, our messaging subsystem. And we're doing that because when Broker started, it was essentially sort of the only thing that we could find that really fit the bill. And these days, we think there are many other options out there, and it's worth it for us to be able to explore how well they work for us and, and essentially enable people to switch when that makes more sense. And this is a big undertaking because over the years, Broker has gained a bunch of functionality that isn't purely about pops up. And the two biggies to mention there is telemetry and storage. So we've started to separate these out and back into Zeek. Um, and this is Tim doing most of that work. Um, and this work really sort of started in, in, in the 6.1 cycle. And the other sort of big thing that happened at that time was that we invested a bit in, in separate setups for, for benchmarking. So we have a, um, a setup that we call Zeek Benchmarker, which essentially runs on um, all of our pull requests and tags. And that lets us compare performance for sort of a set of, you know, macro and, and micro benchmarks. Um, sort of across the board, which is pretty handy. And I'd actually hope to show you this for the new release versus the last one today. Um, but I ran out of time, so I can't do that quite yet, but maybe I can show you that next time. Um, so this is sort of the biggie here. The, the keep in mind that there is a bunch of work happening that is not in the release itself. And so now, ta-da, switching forward to 6.2, which just came out two weeks ago, we have the same picture. And so here, let me go through the details a little bit um, more slowly. Um, you can find all of the details spelled out with more sort of, you know, information in the release notes or in the news file. But the biggies are sort of we've we've done a bunch of projects. Um, sorry for um, um, we've done a bunch of um, protocol analyzer work that was um, long overdue for SMTP. We long known about a bug where if um, the the agent uses PDAD, this binary chunking, we weren't handling that correctly. And for anyone out there who might be also implementing this, um, our test PCAPs actually are really quite thorough. And they're the only instances that we've ever encountered where that chunking actually uses multiple chunks as opposed to just sort of one chunk per message, which is sort of what seems to mostly be happening in practice. Um, we did fixes to GRE over UDP, uh, which wasn't sort of hooked up correctly in the packaging or in the, I keep saying packaging, in the, in the, uh, in the packet framework, packet analysis framework. Um, which was refreshingly little code that was really just a couple of lines. And then a biggie, um, we've spent a bunch of time uh, improving our HTTP protocol upgrade support, and there is now full support for uh, WebSocket analysis. So you can write parsers that are specifically looking at WebSocket protocols. And this is mainly handy in specific settings. This is actually prompted by a collaboration we did with the Jupyter um, folks, the Jupyter um, um, uh, notebook project, 
because they're using um, Zeek behind the scenes to um, um, secure their, their, their infrastructure and there is visible WebSocket traffic in place there. And another reason to find this interesting is that this is the first instance that has landed in Zeek where we're doing a parallel Binpack and Spicy implementation. And we're basically doing that um, because it A, allows us to basically sort of, you know, uh, better understand Spicy and in particular, better understand performance implications of comparing Binpack to Spicy. So, um, uh, so you can you can you can switch those back and forth in the implementation if you're interested in this. And I'm I'm really quite happy with how this landed because I think it's actually sort of quite powerful. We've also expanded Quick, um, mainly um, to make it a little bit more robust in its handling of newer versions and newer editions. Um, this too is in Spicy, so feedback there is particularly welcome. And then. Um, a, a biggie that has landed that was not meant as a push in this particular release is performance improvements. And I'm saying it wasn't really meant as a push for this release and because it was mostly um, happening along the side sort of because our tooling has gotten better, our awareness of where to look for performance improvements has gotten better. And Arne recently put together a really nice blog post for this that some of you might have seen already, where we walk through what these improvements are um, and a little bit uh, of the tooling that we use to find it. And the, the long story short there is that, as usual, the actual improvements that you will see in production depends a little bit on um, you know, your traffic, your installation, and so forth. But it shouldn't be too unrealistic to expect something on the order of sort of 20, 10 to 20 percent of improvement, which is pretty impressive, especially since I have to fully admit that some of those improvements we just found in in, in unused code, dead code, stuff like that. So it's uh, we were pretty wowed. It's it's pretty exciting. And, and um, I think there's an excellent chance that this release is a whole bunch faster for you than the last ones. And then over on the usability side, we've done a bunch of work as well. Um, there is this feature now in tables that you index with patterns that allows you to basically look up the contents of that table with a string and then efficiently get back all of the entries that match in it. So it's sort of like a parallelized um, uh, lookup functionality for, for strings in patterns or patterns and strings, depending on which way around you look at it. Um, pretty cool. There's another feature, this is over in the logging framework that had been requested a couple of times, which is the ability to delay log writes. So when, when you write a log entry in, in, in a Zeek script, just log colon colon write, then there is now essentially a, a, a little framework that you can use to say, but please hold on to this log write a little bit longer before you really flush it out. And that's essentially to allow you to usually to, to add state to the log write that had already happened. Um, pretty powerful. Um, arguably for corner cases, but if you live in one of those corner cases, then you will be really happy to have that feature. The next one is also fun. This is the the um, the fact that in the connection history fields in the con log, you will now occasionally see uh, an X and that X indicates that we, um, the, the parser, uh, a parser in Zeek has um, exceeded a threshold that was somewhat arbitrarily set by us. Now, the, where that comes from is that um, the fact that we're relying extensively on fuzzing um, for you know security purposes, and every now and then the fuzzers find things where um, there is really no right or wrong fix. It's more of a thresholding issue where a certain byte limit comes into play, and it is really not a right or wrong. It's more useful to know that you have hit traffic or uh, an instance of, or have seen an instance of traffic where you have hit such a threshold because that threshold has probably prevented the parser from sort of diving further into a particular chunk or something like that. So if you see that in the con history, this is what that is. And then uh, last not least, in the, in the Intel framework, we've added a bit of configurability where you can now hook into scene Intel and, and control whether you want to sort of proceed with that or skip it. And here too, there's been a bunch of work happening behind the scenes, and it's essentially all along that broker revamp. So Tim did a bunch of work on telemetry to basically get that out of broker and into C proper. Um, and we spent a bunch of time looking at open telemetry for this, uh, and in the end pulled the plug mainly for reasons of um, 
the API not working just right for us and also some bugs that we found, which I think is probably just indicative of the fact that not too many people are using C++ in, in open telemetry. And we switched over to Prometheus, which was sort of the main end goal uh, from the get-go and are using that API right now. And we're sort of iterating on, on sort of aspects of that. Um, but I think this is going to be quite nice and should almost certainly be in 7.0. And then we've prototyped a bunch of stuff. So the, the first thing there is that Tim has also built a first prototype of a new storage API, which is basically going to replace, uh, completely replace the, the current thinking around sort of um, storage back tables and so forth and make this a lot more pluggable. But this is really early days and and um, we'll see when that lands. But it's, it's sort of taking flight just now. And then Arne did an awesome prototype um, also on the sort of like broker alternative sort of um, trajectory to basically just sort of swap out broker completely and substitute it for a different message broker. And this is in this case, Nats. And it's been really interesting because he sort of didn't care about the details of like, oh yeah, but there's telemetry and there's storage and so forth. Oh, all that mattered is how you actually get the messaging to work. And it's interesting because as an external broker, like many others, it is centralized. So you now have a design where Every node in the cluster communicates with that centralized thing. So you have a different sort of paradigm for how you do pops up because you can basically assume now that conceptually every node can see everything that is published still guarded by topics, but, but at least the visibility is there. Whereas if you work in broker, you currently have sort of this this physical topology of you know which nodes are connected to which. And then on top of that, you do pops up. And and it's interesting to think through the implications and whether um, or to which extent applications that are written for the cluster need to be aware of that. So I think this will this will be a really interesting learning experience. It only just started and, and we'll see where that goes. So that's 6.2 in a nutshell. Again, there is more in the news file. Uh, consider that, consult that, read that, um, and then come to us with questions. And that brings me to 7.0, which is a look ahead. This is a roadmap. This is not a promise, <laughs> but um, the first parts of that broker revamp should definitely be starting to land at this point. So the, the telemetry stuff, I, I think, is pretty much guaranteed because it's really quite far at this point. The storage stuff, we'll see how far that goes. Um, if it goes well, it should be in there almost certainly as a sort of alternative to what we have at the moment. Um, but if it comes together, that would be great. And then I am starting to have more time again for development, which is wonderful. So I'm pushing for um, advancing the management framework. And I wanted to particularly thank Dop at ESNet uh, because he really kicked the tires on that um, the last couple of weeks and has gotten his clusters to work via the management framework and sent me a whole list of things that you know he thinks could be better or that were bugs. And I'm going to start working that into two tickets and, and, and pull requests. And some biggies that I would get like, going there is... Um, basically the ability to handle logging and telemetry from the framework and allow you to tap into that. So you can just sort of take a peek at what's going on there, uh, which I think is architecturally quite doable. And it's just a bit of eventing that you need to sort of plug together. And then sort of lots of the basics that aren't really there yet. Health checking. There's been a lot of interest lately via the labs team at Corelight in um, better controlling how the cluster starts and stops. And that's not necessarily technically in the management framework that also sits in the supervisor framework that controls how we currently start and stop Zeek processes. And then just the, the, the bug fixes that I was just referring to that, I, um, that I'm, I'm, I'm learning about. And then on the spicy side, um, there is already a bunch of work that is um, either underway or has already um, completed. Um, uh, Robin has been doing a bunch of the work um, uh, recently on... Um, basically optimizing the way memory, memory management works for the abstract syntax tree in, in SPICY and also on the C++ code generation to make that faster. So that's not the, the runtime, but that's the generation of the C++ code. And Benjamin has finally found time to actually really dive in and do compiler optimization. So, so basically um, the way does, uh, the, the, the SPICY language itself gets translated into C++, um, which should again have some really nice performance payoffs. Um, and then the rest there is 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 um, yeah really sort of forward looking. We are looking into um, revamping or overhauling um, the way we can currently use JSON to serialize events. And this is mainly from a perspective of users external to Zeek, where the current serialization format exposes you to a lot of details about how particularly records 
are serialized and when there's changes in there. And we can do that a lot more sort of robustly. And along with that, we are still hoping to basically, with that release, get out new uh, Python bindings that are then no longer tied to broker because the current broker bindings essentially require you to have um, broker fully built and therefore also you know the broker library, which makes it much harder to use um, the current bindings on an otherwise unrelated system. So this is actually sort of a big chunk of work. I'm, I'm not sure which parts of those will land, but some of that work should be in 7.0. Um, uh, oh yeah, Johanna's work on, on the TLS analyzer. So this is the second instance where we will have um, analyzers side by side that are still written in Binpack and in Spicy. And Johanna has been doing a ton of work over the last few months and weeks um, to basically build a TLS parser that is essentially fe feature equivalent, event generation equivalent to the one that we've had uh, written in Binpack in Zeek for a long time now. So this is this is also quite interesting and sort of exciting for us to land. Um, and the other two, um, well, let's see. So the, the log schema tooling is one that we've kicked down the road twice now, I think, for which I feel bad, also because I think that's in a large part set on my pile. But this is this ability to basically report out in a reusable format what the Zeek log data actually look like and therefore sort of allowing you to reason about what the Zeek data look like from release to release. So what has changed in the logs from version you know, 6.0 to 7.0 and so forth. Um, this can almost certainly mostly live as a package and won't actually need many changes in Zeek itself. And then on the JavaScript side, where we've mainly been waiting for people to really sort of like try it out and, and see where things are, there's a bunch of stuff that we could improve. We've not finalized that list, but it would all be along the lines of things that make it easier to build a package that is using JavaScript, maybe build packages that are fully using JavaScript, um, and essentially just sort of enhance um, the, 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 the level of support for, for typing and, and, and redefing and so forth that you can do over on the JavaScript side. And we'll see about that. This is really very much also driven by, by user feedback. So if you're among the small but capable set of people <laughs> who have um, lately built packages with JavaScript, then this is this is very much driven by your input. And I think that's mostly all I had. I think the next time you will see this might be at Zeek Week. Um, so in which case I can sort of dive in in a little bit more detail. Um, but let me stop here. Um, that's all I had. And I will stop sharing at this point here. Let's see. And with that, it's back to you, Fatima. Awesome. How long did that take? A long time. OK, sorry about that. <laughs> but here you go. <laughs> we still have, I think we're almost top of the bottom of the half hour, but you nailed it. It was pretty much on time. So um, unless there are any questions for Christian on whatever he covered in the slide deck in this call. And if there are any questions, feel free to reach out to us, uh, future people who are watching this um, this on YouTube. And if you feel like you need and you need to make a comment or suggestion or just throw rotten tomatoes, feel free to reach out to Christian on Slack. Um, and of course, for any compliments as well. So great work ahead, and um, thank you so much, Christian, again for sharing sharing all the great stuff. Um, with that, I without further um, Adieu. Are there any in general questions people might have um, for us? And if not, then I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and a good, nice weekend. And if you guys are going out to see Eclipse, um, safe travels. Oh, and right. Pretty yeah. yeah. <laughs> next week on Monday. So safe travels. Um, have an epic adventure. It's always great to witness one of those events once in a life lifetime, at least. So have fun. Thank you so much, Fatima. Great stuff. All right. Stuff. Take care. Cool. Bye, guys. Bye.